Hello everyone, welcome back, and we're doing Inktober today. This is a panda I'll be using, and I forgot to put in my audio. Oh, look. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Caitlin, and it is that time of year again, Inktober, one of my favorite online art challenges, or like, basically just drawing challenges in general. And this year I'm gonna be doing things a little different in a couple of different ways. First off, we're only gonna be doing two Inktober videos, both with 15 prompts in each, because I wanted to consolidate it down a little bit. It's been a little hard posting Inktober every single week in October. So I was just thinking two videos, one halfway through the month and one at the end of the month. And here you are on the first video, so you're gonna be seeing the first 15 prompts today, but on top of that, I'm gonna be doing it kind of on a hard mode, you could say. And by that, this is your hint. Basically, I'm going to be drawing every single Inktober piece this year with a ballpoint pen. That's right, just a ballpoint pen. I will not be sketching with pencil ahead of time, except for my thumbnailing, which I'll show you guys in my sketchbook. I will be doing the full piece from start to finish with a ballpoint pen. And that's it. The only other tool that I'm allowing myself is a white gel pen if I want to add highlights later on, but this is all I'm allowed to use. I actually really enjoy sketching with a ballpoint pen and I've been doing it for a little while in terms of like making my Patreon sketch postcards and sketching in my sketchbook. So I do have kind of an advantage in terms of like, I've worked with this before and I work with it pretty often, but I haven't really done like fully completed rendered pieces. You know what I mean? Just mostly sketches. So this is gonna be interesting to try to do a fully like tonal piece with just a ballpoint pen. I'm really excited to try this out. So let's go ahead and jump in and get started with our first 15 prompts. So let's go ahead and get Inktober 2019 started. So I've been kind of planning a couple of these prompts ever since the prompt list was released. Uh, basically, I took my sketchbook, which you will see right here, uh, admire the great stickers, and uh, I just kind of tried to do little quick sketches of what I wanted to do for each piece. I'm also trying to not show <laughs> the, the next ones, but just to give you an idea, that's kind of what it looks like, and I have some other projects on the way that I did not do a great job covering, but oh well, you guys will see it eventually. So basically, I wanted to go in and make sure that I thumbnailed everything that I needed first and foremost, since I don't really have the ability to sketch on these ones. I just have to jump in and start, and I don't have, uh, you know, pencil sketches to start with first. So for this one, for ring, what I wanted to do was have as many rings as possible for this one. So I thought about like, okay, well, the character could be wearing rings, and then there could also be larger ring bracelets. And then I thought, oh, it'd be cute if this character was sitting in a fairy ring, which is just a ring of mushrooms that grow in the wild, which is pretty cool. And then I was like, oh, we could go even further. And so I thought, what if we did her clothes? Like they could be technically rings. Like the skirt is just like one ring of cloth. And then the top is one of those bandeo tops, which is also just a ring of cloth. <laughs> and I kind of went crazy with the ring ideas. And then to top it all off, I was like, okay, what if we did tattoo rings? And so I thought about different circular tattoos we could do that would be the shape of the ring, like they'd go all the way around her arm, or maybe would make more of a circle ring on different parts of her arm. So that's kind of what I went with. I just kind of went ham and wild with this one and tried to think of every way that I could incorporate ring uh, with this drawing. And this one was really fun. I do really like drawing tattoos, which you're gonna see coming up here in this Inktober. I think so far I've drawn at least two to three characters with tattoos. I can't remember. We're gonna have to go through and see what, what's left in the video. 16 of these in, and uh, I'm already forgetting what I drew. <laughs> And then now it's time to start day two. So for day two, oh man, I should get the list in front of me so then I know what I'm talking about before I start drawing. Ah uh, yes, we have mindless. So for mindless, I had this kind of fun idea of just this troll sitting there and hammering two rocks together in its hands. I just thought it was kind of a fun play on mindless, kind of doing this more dumb big character that just kind of is mindlessly doing something for entertainment. And uh, I don't know why I thought of this, but at first I thought of like, maybe I could do like a zombie or like some type of like a uh, necromancer servant that is just kind of, you know, mindless, literally. 
But I was like, it would be kind of fun to just do this really big, goofy, dumb character. And uh, this one was really fun. It was just kind of fun doing like really exaggerated uh, proportions, like his face. I really love doing the big jaw and then just doing this uh, different body type that I don't do as much. And it was really fun. And then just having the character just smashing rocks together. I was just kind of giggling as I slowly put this guy together because he's just he's just so stupid, but in the cutest way. He's just this cute, dumb troll. So next up we have Bait. So at, I had a couple ideas for this and I'm gonna have to thank uh, my friend Janelle for helping me figure out how this final one was gonna look. Uh, my first one was thinking if, uh, like at least the angle would be um, someone like sitting with like a knife behind their back and I had this kind of idea of this like really uh, like sexy woman sitting on a chair and then you would see the knife behind her back but it's from her front so you don't even see who she's baiting. But then my friend Janelle gave me the idea of like, oh, what if it was from behind the character and you see the person that the character is baiting and will potentially be like killing? And I was like, oh, that's so cool. So this is kind of my first I guess you could say kind of lewd-ish, not safe for work-ish drawing uh, on the channel. Um, I, I don't, I guess I don't really draw a lot of naked people on YouTube just because of, you know, ad revenue and the censorship and all that. But this one, I was like, you know what, whatever. We're gonna get a cute butt and it's gonna be a cute tiefling girl. And I just went for it. And I really like how this one turned out. And I'm actually very proud of my butt because <laughs> I don't draw butts much and I always feel I struggle with them. So I was pretty happy with this one. And uh, I really love how the overall look came out. Now we're on to number four, which was Freeze. So this one, I kind of knew right away. This was one of the first ones I thought of when I saw the prompt list. I really wanted to do a ice giant and have some cool big ice hands or something. And I wanted to try doing a more uh, uh, emaciated, I think that's the word, uh, like torso. So it's much more thin. Looks like this guy's been starving for a bit and uh, just like have a gnarly beard. And I just was really excited for this one. And uh, yeah, so I think this one turned out really great. I was really proud of my chest and rib combo. I've, I don't know why, but I've been really into drawing things like super thin and emaciated. And I don't know why, I just think it's kind of cool. And the, yeah, this guy was really fun and kind of big and gnarly. And I love doing the really crazy long arms. I think I could have executed the ice a little better, but I had no clue how to shade ice in pen. So I still think it turned out pretty dang good. Next is build. So for build, I knew I wanted to do kind of like a cute mechanic uh, design, like a little mech builder, uh, like an engineer. And I know in D&D, &D you have more the steampunk engineer type of thing. So I was like, let's do that. Let's make a cool uh, steampunk female engineer and I was going between either showing a full body of this character or maybe her working at her station. And as you can see, I did go with her sitting and working at her station and working on this cute little robot. And this one was fun because I had to figure out a way to show the character design with just the torso up. So I gave her some really big gloves. Obviously she has the little robot she's working on, some cute suspenders. And then I had fun with kind of a different top, like showing off the the shoulders, I, I don't think they're called cold shoulder ones. There's a different name for that type of top. Uh, and then I added a bunch of tools and such to the table. And I think she turned out really cute. And it, I, I don't know. I'm just gonna say that about all these is they're cute and cool and I like them. And I'm having a lot of fun sketching with a ballpoint pen. And then now we're on to number six, which was Husky. And I wanted to do a like Husky character first and foremost, but I'm like, let's just double up on the Husky. Like how we had ring a million times her ring. Let's do that for Husky. So I first thought of doing a Husky short dwarf that was like a, a winter dwarf somewhere like in the depths of the snowy plains or something, maybe deep in the mountains. And then I was like, oh man, what if we gave him a pet husky. Uh, I know he'd probably more have a wolf if you want to be like accurate to times and D&D, &D, I guess. I don't think there's a, a husky option for a companion, but I was like, you know, it's close enough. Uh, so I did a husky dwarf with his husky companion and it was fun giving like 
the the dwarf looks similar to his husky. For example, the beard, I put like a string a strand of a white going down the center and then the husky has the same going down the center of its forehead to its mouth and I just kind of wanted to make it look like this dwarf was also like husky designed like a little bit of both in each. And then after Husky was enchanted. So this one, I knew that I wanted to do a character interaction and have two characters with this one, but it was like just deciding exactly how I wanted them to interact. So what I did land on was I wanted um, a thief to be stealing from an unsuspect unsuspecting patron. Yep, I can talk, but using a spell to uh, trick them and think that she didn't steal from them. And I thought that'd be really fun. And I just thought this character interaction would be really cute. So I have our thief in the foreground hiding the sack of gold behind her back. And then while she is talking to uh, the unsuspecting warrior, she like kind of does a little cute, like under the chin, like poke with her finger. And I don't, I don't know what you call that, like a there's a maybe stroking the chin. I don't know whatever it's called. But while she's doing that, she is administrating a uh, enchanting spell. So he's under her thumb, so to say, in terms of not knowing that his gold was stolen and he's just head over heels for this uh, dark elf. And I think this is really cute. I just love their interaction and their expressions. And I just love our little warrior just like totally head over heel heels, I can talk, or like completely Twitter-pated. Yep, that's, yep, that's what I was going for. So that one was great, but then next up, we have Frail. So Frail, I, again, wanted to do a really, like, skinny, thin character that just has not been eating well, and uh, just a heads up for anyone who's arachnophobic, you probably want to skip this one. So I wanted to do a Drider, which is a drow spider combo. And I, I noticed, I think not last year, but the year before when I did uh, Monster Girls, I did a spider woman Drider combo. But this one, I wanted to do this male Drider that looks like he's been uh, walking and patrolling a dungeon, trying to find his next meal, but hasn't really had a lot of success. So that's kind of what I was going for with his design and why I wanted to make him really thin and frail. And he's probably really weak from not having a lot of food since he's been downcast into this dungeon. And then the spider legs kind of, I know when a spider is bigger, they're probably obviously stronger and thicker. But when I think of spiders, I think of them as kind of like frail small creatures is because their legs are so thin and they also deal with such um, a thin frail material of webbing. And I just see them as kind of these, uh, I guess you could just say frail creatures. And then I just doubled that up by making the drow half of our drider, just very thin, frail, weak, not a lot of strength or any meat on his bones. And now we are on to swing. So this one, I had a couple of ideas. I'm like, well, what if we did one where like someone's swinging a mace around or uh, I didn't want to do like a swing, like a kid swing. Um, but I also got another idea from, I think Janelle told me too, man, she's been giving me a lot of ideas for this Inktober, uh, but to swing a sword. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. That's a great idea. So at first I had the character swinging towards the camera, but I was like, why don't I try a pose that I haven't really done before and this like back shot with like the hair flowing and I call them butt capes. I know they're probably, they have a official term, but basically a butt cape, like flowing backwards in the wind and then showing the big arcing motion of this really powerful, powerful sword swipe. Man, I'm doing great on words today, guys. Uh, basically showing this big swing and adding some motion lines like it's in a comic and I just, uh, I was so proud of this one. I was so afraid of it not turning out well because I did have the initial sketch in my sketchbook, but I was like, man, I won't be able to do any construction lines like super well with like a pencil ahead of time, but oh, I'm so happy it actually turned out well and the anatomy actually is working for this one and you can feel like the motion behind that sword strike. And then after that, we are at Pattern. So <laughs> this is a fun story. So Pattern, I had this idea of this like cool, like buff lady with like a really 
uh, tatted out arm uh, holding onto her belt. And you guys can weigh in in the comments or like up in like a poll. I'll put a poll at the end of the drawing. Uh, but I got mixed reviews on if this looked weird <laughs> in terms of her holding her belt. Uh, I ended up replacing her holding her belt with like holding a basket. So you guys get to see behind the scenes. I was showing a couple of people in the art community, like I was talking with uh, Drawing with Waffles and I think it was Hello Alice and uh, I think Momo was there too. There's quite a few people in the chat and we were all talking about, like I, we were sending art back and forth what we were working on and I sent them this one and they're like, what is she holding? And I'm like, oh no, that's supposed to be her belt. But <laughs> they were like, oh, you could just edit it and no one would know. And I'm like, no, no, I'm just gonna own up to it. And I'll just, you know, show them the whole process of me trying to decide if this looked phallic or not. <laughs> but uh, in the end, I do end up covering it with a basket, but I'm like, you know, we got the pattern of the arm with the different tattoos, but we also get the patterning of the woven basket. And it, I got to add some other cool elements of like little fruits and vegetables and things, but it, it was a little difficult to do that cover up job because I already had established such solid lines with the belt and the, uh, I guess the, I'm assuming they would have been pants or like a larger skirt. Like I already established those lines and now I'm stuck with having to redraw over them. But I, I think I did the best with what I had, you know, like it, they were already put down solid lines and I had to basically figure out how to make it, you know, with a completely different element in front of it. And I still think it turned out pretty okay. And now with pattern done, let's go ahead and jump into snow. So this one, I wanted to have a character out on a snowy plane, basically out in nature with snow. And uh, I wanted to do another pose that I don't do very often, which is like from the back sitting on something. And at first I was freaking out when I first laid these construction lines down. I'm like, oh, I didn't put the leg where I wanted it or like I didn't put something in a certain place, but it still turned out good. Like I was freaking out about the anatomy at first, but after I started laying in the details and like doing some correcting through adding details, it ended up turning really good, turning out really good. And uh, yeah, I think this is the cutest little huntress. I love her uh, fur cape and the background elements with like the snow on the tree and her sitting on a log, looking out into the distance, seeing where she should go next. I thought it just had a really good mood and feel to it. And I always kind of struggle with how to shade snow, but I think it conveys well that she is like sitting in snow among snow and there's like snow on the tree and on her log and on top of the rocks. All right, and after that we have dragon. So I got a lot of messages of people being like, are you gonna draw a dragon for dragon? And I was like, I already draw a lot of dragons. We have the 100 dragon challenge. I draw dragons for fun. So I was like, why don't we do like dragon armor? I wanna keep this with like a character design theme and kind of doing like creature characters. I, I mean, I guess a dragon's a creature, but I just wanted to flex other muscles, like not do just dragons and do a dragon armor piece. So I decided to do a dragonborn, which, you know, it's basically a dragon human. So there's another dragon check mark. And I wanted to do this dragonborn warrior in this really cool uh, dragon armor. So the helm would be made out of the skull of a dragon. I'm assuming they slayed a pretty young dragon to get a skull that small. And then uh, the armor would also have like the spikes or teeth of the dragon along with some bones and extra little bits and some scaling from the dragon too. And I just wanted it to be like a cool armor design overall and not just like, here, I made another dragon, guys. Wow, I draw dragons all the time. <laughs> so I thought this was a good uh, option for still fitting with the dragon theme, but not just drawing a dragon. And I wanted to draw armor. Like I've been trying to like practice armor and do more character design and armor design. And this was a good excuse. So I looked up some reference and some plating and I really love how it looks. And now after that, we have Ash. So this one, I thought it would be fun to have a character that covers themselves in Ash. So I wanted to do this kind of assassin-like character 
that covered uh, her eyes in ash and maybe had some uh, ash uh, handprints or patterning on her arms and different areas, but then keep her, I want to keep her outfit really simple as well. Just kind of like a, I don't know, maybe not like a professional assassin, but maybe a, a new orc warrior who is bringing her people with her uh, through like, maybe they, they burned the wood from her village to put the ash on their bodies to be like, well, I'm bringing my ancestors with me. And I thought that'd be kind of a cool and fun uh, juxtaposition to the ash because I was thinking ash you could do someone like smoking or something smoking or um, oh I don't even know what else I'm trying to think what other ash things we could do but this is the one at least I thought of initially was just putting ash onto the character instead of like having something that generates ash And now after Ash, it's time to do Overgrown. So this was actually one of my favorites. I was really excited once I thought of the idea to jump in and draw it, but it was also a little intimidating because I loved the idea of it and I wanted to make sure that I pulled it off correctly with these pens. So I thought it would be kind of cool to have this tree nymph that was trapped in a tree. I know usually they can like jump in and out of trees or manipulate the nature around them, but I think it'd be interesting if this nymph just got stuck, like somehow became one with the tree and she's waiting for some type of passerby to come by and wake her. And uh, maybe it's really deep in the forest, so it's kind of hard to find where she is locked away. Thus her like hair, which is similar to like a weeping willow, uh, like leaves, vines, uh, it's just become really overgrown and long. And then you get the other uh, weeping willow leaves around her from this tree and I just I love this one I love the mood and the feeling from it. I really like how the texturing turned out for the leaves and the trees uh, I was a little intimidated by the leaves because I don't do that often, but I, I think they turned out great I, I think this is one of my favorites for sure really love this piece overall And now after overgrown we have legend so this one was a pretty uh, interesting one. I had a little bit of trouble figuring out what to do at first. I'm like, well, I could do like an epic character design and like basically have the legend when they were living and do that design. But I was like, what if we did a big sculpture of the legend? So I decided to do like a mountain, a mountainside uh, carving where in ancient times, uh, this hero was celebrated for something that he did and they ended up taking many years to carve him into the side of a mountain. Maybe this is his uh, village that he grew up in or just a rural village that he saved. I'm not really sure. I'm thinking that the story was kind of lost to time and he is a legend, as you could say. Just a hero that helped people when they were in need, but his name has been kind of lost to the winds and lost to time but we know that he did something epic and something great to be carved into the side of a mountain. Or he just had a lot of money and was like, hey guys, you know what I need? I need my face on the side of that mountain. <laughs> Who knows? We know, well, I guess we'll never know. Just something, he either did something great or he just was really wealthy, <laughs> one of the two. And then finally, we are on wild. So I decided to do 16 for this one instead of my initial 15. Uh, because Wednesday was uh, the 16th and I know I'm releasing this video a little late just because I just didn't have time but I was like let's just do 16 since it's not a direct half we have 31 days so we could do 16 for this one and then 15 for the other half but I had a blast with this one I absolutely love Knowles I don't know why I don't draw them more I think I say this at the end card as well but they're just so gnarly and cool and most of them are like hyena like monsters and i really like hyenas and uh just having like it, having them in the game with like their bloodlust and just like being these really gnarly werewolfish like characters are cool and i just love it i mean i guess they're not werewolves but you know like humanoid dog creatures and they're just really intense and I love that they are hyena like I love adding the spots and like the big tufts of fur on the back and just giving them that really intense look and I added a little bit of blood and some other cool stuff but overall really love how this one turned out as well 
And there we have it, guys. We are done with the first 16 Inktober drawings. And I'm really liking these ones. These are kind of more character design driven and like creature design driven. And it's been a really good exercise to just sketch with the ballpoint pen. It's really making me think ahead of time and kind of try to plan it in my brain before putting the pen to paper. And it's been a really good exercise. I think my favorite so far from these first 16, I got, I, I'll do a top three. I really like Overgrown. I thought this one turned out really good and I feel like it has a lot of good emotion behind it. So I really love this one. I was also super happy with Enchanted. I just thought this was like a really cute, like character interaction that I did. And I was really proud of this one. Okay, this is gonna turn into a top four because I also really liked Swing because I think this is one of the most dynamic poses I've done in a long time in terms of like action poses. So really happy with this one. And I thought it was like kind of stretching my creative muscles in terms of how does this anatomy work? And then finally, I really like how Wild turned out. Like I just really like Knowles and they're really cool. And I don't know why I like don't draw them more often, but this guy was super fun and super gnarly to draw. So I'm super excited to finish off Inktober. I know it's not like a huge piece like I did last year, but these ones are also really fun and challenging in their own way. And I have a lot of cool ones planned for the last couple days of October. So if you guys aren't already and you would like to follow me for more cool and awesome art videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I have new videos. I'm trying to do every Wednesday, Friday, but it's been a little hectic recently. And uh, I would love if you hit a like if you like this video and let me know down below, would you like me to make an Inktober book? I'll also put a little poll he here. Yes, I'll put a poll here, but let me know down in the comments below if you'd be interested in maybe getting a little book of all of these Inktobers put together. So thanks again guys so much for stopping by and checking out this video and I will see you all next time. Bye everybody.